Welcome back to Strange Stories with the Seeker and the Skeptic. Today we have with us Amy Ketchum. Amy is from my hometown back in New York, and we met when she was um, attending one of my workshops a couple of years ago. And she has a couple of strange stories to share with us. So we're very excited to have you today, Amy. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So give us a little bit of background about you, Amy. Um, let me say, um, I'm a massage therapist. Um, I've always loved everything, um, I don't know, supernatural, if you want to say. Um, I, you know, I grew up using the Ouija board. I know a lot of people <laughs> don't like that, but we just, it was just common in our, in our family to, you know, grow up with this kind of stuff. So, um, and I've always been interested in it. It's always been very intriguing. Um, I, I don't have like super senses. Like I, I don't get messages or anything. Um, well, no, I take that back. I'm sorry. Um, I, I have gotten some messages, but I wouldn't say I'm, I'm not psychic, but I have gotten some messages and some intuition and my intuition always seems to be spot on, but I don't always listen to it. And that's mm -hmm. something I really need to work on. Absolutely. I think that's something we all have to work on. <laughs> yes. So who introduced you to like the Ouija board and what was that like oh, as a kid? My grandparents. <laughs> I, I remember using that as early as elementary school. We just, mm -hmm. and, and there was other things we did, you know, we, we just did a lot of stuff like that. Everything on that realm we did, it was just normal to me. Um, I guess my grandma, she, she had a little more, um, psychic abilities, I guess. Um, so I guess it somewhat runs in our family. My nephew has tons of psychic abilities. He sees, um, he sees spirit all the time and can actually talk to them and have conversations with them and has his entire life. So it kind of runs in our family. I mean, I, I got a little bit of it, but not, not too much. You know. Would that be on your, your mother's side of the family or your father's side of the family? My mother's. And then your mother's mother then? I'm sorry? Your mother's yes, mother. Yes, my mom's mom. Yes. Okay. That's interesting. Did that, uh, did that continue on to, you know, your, your mother as well? Was she also interested slash, uh, you know, experiential in those types of things? My mom isn't. Um, I am. My sister is. Like I said, my nephew definitely has the ability um, there are other people in my family, like aunts and cousins, who who kind of have it too. So it, we have a big family. So it's you know some of us have it, some of us don't. Gotcha. So when you were using the Ouija board back then, was it like presented as like a game, or was it more presented as like a serious thing that we are um, actually trying to connect? I guess it was a. I, I was a kid, so I took it as a game. Yeah. But as I got older, I realized how, like, two of my aunts, how eerily they were able to use that. Like, like when they played together, we actually had to have a third person sitting there writing notes because the, the planchetta on the Ouija board would move so fast, you couldn't keep up with what it was saying, so we needed someone to just sit and write it down and later break it up into words mm -hmm. because though my two aunts, they, it, it was just amazing. I mean, it, the, the Ouija board would go into um, details. One time it, it gave them a message to give to somebody that they did not know, but it gave them a message to give to somebody. And they actually looked that person up and gave them the message. And that person was just so, you know, so grateful and beside themselves because that that message you know meant so much to them wow that's very interesting yeah so tell us a little bit of your um like spiritual background like what you know do you have a specific you know spiritual like tradition that you follow or no I'm, I'm not um I'm not religious 
but I do believe in the spirit world. I believe in our, we have spirit guides. Um, I believe there's something greater than us. I just don't, I personally don't think you need an organized religion to relate to that or to be, you know, a decent person and do good things on earth. So, you know, I just kind of go, I go with a flow. I kind of, I try to listen to my intuition and, you know, I just try to do it day by day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I really am eager for you to tell us your story about your intuition and going to the grocery store. So tell us all about that. Okay. Well, I have two stories. I'll start with the grocery store one. Um, I, at the time, had moved to South Carolina and I was had came back up to New York to visit over Easter break. Um, and it was this particular day, it was Easter day. And the next morning I was due to drive back to South Carolina and I was at my mom's and all of a sudden this message came through my head. The message did not have a voice, but clearly something was being downloaded to me. And it told me to go to the local grocery store, which was Price Chopper. And when I first got the message, I'm like, all right, that was weird. And I shrugged it off. A little while later, same message again, go to the grocery store. Again, I thought it was weird. This went on for several hours. And finally, I got to the point where I'm like, I told my mom, I was like, I'm going to the grocery store. And she asked me why. I said, I have no idea. <laughs> so I got in the car and the whole way to the store, I'm arguing with myself. Like, why are you doing this? This is ridiculous. You don't need anything at the store. But yeah, I continue to drive because somehow some, some force was making me do that. So I went there, I parked, and as I go into the store, I'm still grumbling with myself. This is silly. I don't need anything. I'm going up and down every aisle. I'm like trying to think if there's something I need. I'm like, nope, I don't need this. I don't need this. Up and down every single aisle. When I finally get to the very last aisle, I run into the guy who is now my husband. So I, I thought that was like really weird. <laughs> Like you physically ran into him? I, well, not physically ran into okay. him. Uh, we saw each other in the aisle. Yes. Okay. Um, we, we had known each other when we were young. So we saw each other in the aisle and we reconnected from, you know, from our younger years. And then, you know, things, you know, progressed and now we're married. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, when did you have the realization? I mean, I'm assuming because you're telling us the story. When did you have the realization that meeting him at the store or running into him at the store was the reason why you kept being like told, like, you need to go to the store. You need to go to the store. Um, one, I finally felt peace come over me and the messages stopped coming at this, you know, <laughs> I, 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 they stopped telling me to go into the store. And then once I met him, I was like, th th this was it. I, I just knew, you no, know, you just knew deep inside, like that was supposed to happen. Wow. Can you tell us a little bit, you said it was like this message was being downloaded. There's no voice attached. So describe to us what it was like, like, how did you know that you needed to go to the store? What, what was that experience of receiving the download like? It, it was really weird. That has, had never happened to me before. And it was so weird. Like someone was, I was clearly getting a message. And obviously looking back, I had to been telepathically or something like that. It, it was weird. It, it struck me odd that there was no voice, but it was very clear. Somebody was telling me this is what I need to do. And I, I just went with it. You know, I, I didn't question at the time, like, how I was getting the information. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still kind of wonder now, but at the time, I just didn't really question it. At the time, I was just like, this is silly. Why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Was it kind of like this just knowing, like, I have to go, like, I have to go to the store? 
Yeah. Well, I knew, like I said, I, I re- clearly received the message. Not like I just had a thought like, oh, I should go to the store. Yeah. That message was being downloaded to me. Somebody was sending that message to me and I received it. And then eventually I listened. I'm like, I have, I have to do this. I have to follow this for whatever reason. Do you, you feel like an experience like this and then also kind of looping back around to the, the idea of the, the Ouija um, situation with you and also family members, do you feel like, uh, well, one, do you, do you feel like that those are a connected thing or, or maybe not? Connected with the Ouija? Yeah. Do you, do you, do you feel like it's, it's the same kind of thing that's causing that would cause that, you know, you, you, the word you use was download would be a similar um, type of phenomenon as getting real answers from a Ouija board when you were a kid. I don't think they're quite the same, I guess only because when you're doing the Ouija, it's spelling stuff out. So you're reading things like I never heard anything or got information doing the Ouija. I was just reading whatever they were saying Whereas this, I was clearly given information like somebody was telling me mm-hmm. sure. something. So it, it was a little bit different. It's more of an internal experience rather than the Ouija board is more of an external kind of experience. Yes. Okay. Where do you think the download was coming from? Honestly, I, I think it was my spirit guides. I, I really do. Well, or, and, or my late husband that I really believe that my late husband had some, something to do with putting us together. What makes you say that? I don't know. It's just a feeling I have. It, it just really is. I, I, I can't explain it, but I, I just feel it was, or maybe it was a combination between him and my spirit guides. I don't, it's just something I feel. I, I It's hard to explain. Yeah, and a lot of these things, it's like, I mean, I've received downloads, so I know what you're talking about, but if other people haven't, it's hard to put it into words, you know? And so, like, it, what you're saying about, like, I know that my late husband was involved, it's, there's no scientific way right now to explain why, you know, it's more of just, it's this feeling, it's your intuition that is telling you that. Exactly. That to me is just a very fascinating story on a lot of different levels. Um, Personally, for me, why it's fascinating is I believe that Jonathan and I were guided together. Um, He might not completely buy into that. (laughs) (laughs) But I do. Um, I mean, I was living in New York. We met online through, you know, a a, a fitness challenge. Um, and I just have this intuitive knowing of like, I was part of that group. I was part of that challenge. I was part of that community in part to meet him. Yeah, I, I believe that too. I, I totally believe everything happens for a reason. We just might not understand it at the time. Yep. Yeah. And so it's so fascinating to me that, you know, just you were guided and you went there and look at how your life turned out. Whereas had you refused to, you know, listen to that guidance, life could look very different. You could still be in South Carolina. (laughs) It could. But bringing that up, that brings me to my second time I got downloaded where I did not listen and it had some kind of negative consequences. Yeah. Tell us about that. Okay, well, I was on my honeymoon with a guy who I met at the grocery store. Um, We were coming back from our honeymoon, and we went to St. Lucia. So on the flight back, we had to go through customs and then go through TSA. And as I was standing in line with customs, I got this other download that said, Amy, take off your flip-flops and put your sneakers on. And again, I'm like wow that was weird I ignored it again and a little while later same thing Amy take off your flip-flops get your sneakers out of your suitcase and put them on and then I'm arguing with myself 
course. I'm like, it's so much easier to go through TSA with flip flops. You know, I don't want to have to take off sneakers and put them back on, blah, blah, blah. So I did not listen. And when we got through um, the place where we had to give them our packed luggage, I actually, as I watched them take my luggage, my heart and stomach kind of sank. I'm like, Amy, you really should have done that. But I didn't. And no less than 10 minutes later, as we were heading down from TSA into, um, we were going to go to the food court to get something while we're waiting for our flight. And less than 10 minutes later, I slipped on some water that was spilled on the floor, Oh, went down, massively injured myself, and ended up having to have surgery. Oh. Wow. Yeah, so that, and I can't help but wonder now, like, if, if I had listened, would I have got injured that bad? Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 I can't say for sure if I would or wouldn't have, but my gut is telling me that I was being told that for a reason and Mm -hmm. maybe I would not have gotten injured as bad if I did have listened. Did that feel similar to the first download or was it It, different? A hundred percent the same. Okay. That's interesting. And it's where those were the only two times I've ever had those downloads, Mm -hmm. but they, they were a hundred percent identical. How have these experiences influenced you? Oh, I, it greatly increased my belief in our spirit guides and there's more on the other side. And then I really need to start listening to my intuition. I get intuition all the time. Um, Usually it's about silly and significant things. You know, I could think of a song and, seconds later it comes on the radio or you know something silly like that but I have that little stuff all the time and I don't always listen to it and I'm trying harder to listen to it now because sometimes I don't and I'm like oh I really should have listened to myself Mm -hmm. but when it's something so silly and it's insignificant you don't think much of it at the time until afterwards Mm-hmm. when you're like yeah I, I really should have done that and I think it's easy for our ego to kind of talk us out of it you know for what it, for yeah. our reason that's, good, yeah. that's exactly what happened when I was going to the grocery store my ego was arguing myself mm-hmm. like this is silly why are you doing this but the force sending me there was greater than my ego at that time and I'm very grateful for that yeah for sure I, I do think that as, as humans, we, we kind of want to have an explanation for things. I mean, I, I know that, you know, I, I personally like to have reasons for, for things that are happening around me and things that I do. And, you know, I think everyone finds themselves asking that question sometimes of, you know, is there, you know, what, what, is, what is the logic behind this? So, you know, as humans, we're, kind of, we're also kind of trained to ask questions like that. It's like, well, is this a logical thing? So I think that does makes sense you know personally you know from, from my perspective um you know i have no doubt that what we call intuition is probably at least sometimes a, a thing that we just haven't figured out a way to how to measure yet you know science wise you know, science is very young in the grand scheme of things and you know when it comes to intuition stuff it's easy to, dis- to dismiss things when they're happening to you but when you if you've got like you know the the benefit of a couple of years to look back on you can kind of see, well, I would, I would have been right about, you know, X number of things. And, you know, it, it does start to look like a pattern, right? Like, I mean, that's just kind of a thing that, but we also, as humans, our brains look for patterns. So that's, that's that as well. You know, I've got no doubt that you experienced the things that you're talking about for sure. Um, you know, as far as the whole, you know, skeptic thing, you know, we, we our, our deal here with, with this is, you know, seeker and skeptic. Um, and me being the the more skeptical of the two, it's not that I doubt the people are experiencing what they're experiencing. I'm just always curious about the reasons behind what's going on with them. Uh, for me, it's interesting that you've got that family history of you know, you know precognition, even with you know the 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 tool of the, the Ouija board. You know, 
Yes. Oh, I 100% believe you. It, it is hard to believe in something you can't see and you don't fully understand. But when you feel it deep within your soul, then you kind of got to go with it. Yeah. Sure. I've actually been kind of waiting for to, to have a, a talk with somebody who's more intuition based as far as their experience goes, because there's a, a thing that I experienced well, actually, it wasn't me that experienced it was my father, who's who passed away a few years ago, that is very intuition based. And I don't think I've even told Brittany this before, um, but with, with my dad and intuition. Uh, but my, my father was, he was a Southern Baptist minister, and he kind of was of the belief that anything, anything that was going to be happening supernatural kind of ended 2000 years ago. You know what I'm saying? He's one of those people. Mm -hmm. And, but when I was 11, my dad looked at me and we didn't have a lot of conversations. My dad was not a, a you know, he, he didn't talk a lot. He just was a, he's a weird guy. And he looked at me, he said, if you're ever with a friend and he takes the television, run. Oh my God. <laughs> you have not and told me that story. The, the reason why she says, oh my God is that uh 20 years ago uh my one of my best friends who's actually still one of my best friends and i um to make a very long story very very short um had been drinking one day uh in the middle of the winter and we had gone to the the school we had both gone to we had both gone to the college together we, neither one of us was enrolled anymore he had left i had graduated and we uh, were drunkenly wandering around campus and he stole a television from that from that place and he he was fast and I was not. And I was wandering around. I'd forgot we were drunk. I'd forgotten that it happened. And I ended up getting arrested because I didn't leave. And they would never have found me. They didn't know where I lived. I wasn't a student anymore. They had no way of getting hold of me. I just I just was drunk, you know. Drunk drunk right. people do dumb things. And I ended up um, you know, having a, a a minor but annoying legal issue to deal with because I did not run when my friend saw it. So Days later, it, it it reminded me of that thing my father told me. I was 11. And he, he had no way of having any thought that anything like that was going to happen. He didn't believe in intuition. He didn't really believe in anything other than, you know, the physical, you know, Bible. But I, I you know, with, with the benefit of hindsight, I have to assume that that was an intuition event he had somehow. And, you know. I love it. Those are definitely very interesting stories. I mean, you could see it on my it face. Is. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I love hearing about um, other people's stories too. It's, I don't like, so you can't explain it, but I, yeah. I just love hearing about it. I, I love everything about it. So do we. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> I'm so glad you are. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, you know, and I think that we understand ourselves and reality and humanity better through storytelling. You know, I think there's a lot of power in it. So I, I think it is great to have these conversations. So, Amy, do you know, like, who your guides are, what they are? Like, what what do you think about all of that? I don't know. And I have tried, um, I've taken some of um, John Edwards courses to try to communicate with my spirit guides and get better at this. And I don't know if sometimes I try so hard that I block anything that should be coming to me because I really want it that bad. I think I just kind of need to, you know, relax a little and let it come naturally but I don't know who they are. And I, and I wish I did, because I would really like to um, build on that. You know, I would like to, I can't say I have a relationship, but mm -hmm. I, I would like to be able to listen to them more. And, you know, they, they say you can communicate with them. So I, I, I just think that would be really, really neat, but I just haven't had the opportunity to experience that yet. And when you get an in like an intuitive guidance, you know, for you said it happens a lot for like little everyday things. Is it similar to like just this like inner knowing or is it a gut feeling? What is that like for you? Kind of like a gut feeling. Okay. 
yeah, just kind of like your your intuition and your gut is telling you this is the thing or this is what's going to happen. Yes. So in in the context of of trying to get more information about what you're calling uh, what what you you specifically would call spirit guides, uh, are there are there specific methods that you've tried? Uh, are there things that you're more open to trying or less open to trying? Like, is there like a a specific path that you feel is calling to you to try to do that? Um, I have tried a lot of different things. I've taken a lot of different classes. I've read books on how to do it. Um, I just haven't been able to make it work for me. Um, I, I don't know why. I mean, I, I would I would just love to be able to do it. I, I've, like I said, I've taken several different classes, some in person, some online. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that they'll... They'll ask you, like, you know, show, pass a picture and, like, tell me what you think of this picture. And then they'll go around and everyone will say what they think. And then in the end, the teacher will say, well, you know, you know, this person was, you know, this, 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 this. And then you're like, oh, all right. I got one or two of those things out of that. But, you know, not not everything. But I, I, I'm willing to try anything. You know, I try meditate. Um, I have gotten past life regression done. I really want to get my Kashuk records read. I think that would be really neat. Well, you know somebody who does that, so. <laughs> do you do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, I do. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. I have to contact you. <laughs> Absolutely. Just reach out to me. But I think it's... Um, Everybody is so different when it comes to intuition. And I do, you said something before that I'm just going to share my beliefs about. You said you didn't really think that you're psychic. I genuinely believe that everybody has the ability to be psychic. I think that some people are born maybe a little bit more open than others and that, but other people can do things to enhance their intuition or their connection to spirit. So that's my belief system. Not everybody shares that and that's okay for sure. You know, for me, it sounds like where you just have this intuitive knowing. And so for you, the practices that would kind of help you tune into that a little bit more might be different from, um, you know, somebody else who, again I can't remember my Claire's <laughs> like oh, who can Claire see audience. it yeah oh, like who can who can oh, hear oh, it or see it right like yours is just this intuitive knowing so like how you would probably work on it to enhance it might be different you know so it's just figuring out like the path that's right for you um and I, I think you're right in terms of like if you try too hard you're blocking off the energy channel that will connect you Yes. You know, and that's yeah. something I learned when I was um, training to do like Reiki is like, it's like, stop trying, stop doing, just be the channel, be open, relax. And then you're letting the natural energy flow. And I feel like it's probably very similar for this. I, I agree. Um, I know when I got um, <clears throat> my level one Reiki, when I was getting attuned, I, I, I was wanted it so bad that I felt like I was maybe blocking it. Mm-hmm. So I asked my my teacher. She's like, "No, it, it it went through. Don't worry about it." But while I was getting it, I'm like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, you know, I, I was so excited to get it, but you know, my mind is just like all over the place and being scattered. And yeah, I think that's a very common experience. Again, it's like. The, the ego parts kind of get in the way you know so it's yes. like learning how how do we quiet them down so that you can kind of let that that spiritual energy come through exactly just for reference because the, the, these the 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 clairs the quote clairs have come up a couple of times but i don't think we've actually had in an episode uh, an actual definition of what this what this means and i try to bring in definitions of stuff when we talk about things that maybe not the, the casual listener may not be familiar with most people have heard of clairvoyance which is you know anyone who can who says that they are um a medium of some kind would would be considered someone who says that they are a clairvoyance that that means clear seeing uh 
Uh, but there are a total of five of these things uh, consistent within you know metaphysics people. Um, there's clear audience, which is hearing something. You got a message that comes, you know, uh, you know, orally through for you. Uh, there's clear sentience, which is a clear feeling, which sounds mostly kind of what you're talking about. But there's something similar that's called clear cognizance, which is a, a clear knowing, which is maybe that maybe that's the download thing. I don't really know. And then there's one that is is all always on these lists, but I've never heard anyone say that they have experienced it. Um, it's this clear, clear aliens, which I'm probably not pronouncing that right, which means clear smelling. I've never known anyone say that they have a psychic smelling power. But if, but if, if somebody here is listening and has that, I want to talk to you. So I want to know what that means. Just putting well, it out there. Uh, I've heard people. I've heard people who say like they can smell somebody. Like if someone who has passed, and let's say a certain perfume they wore, or something like that. Like they can, somebody can smell that and like know that. Oh, you know, so and so is here because I can definitely smell, you know, their perfume, or I can smell whatever pipe they smoked, or something like that. I, I have de definitely heard of people doing that. That definitely happened to me after my grandma passed away. Um, I came home from school one day and the entire house smelled like her perfume. And it was like maybe a week or two after she had passed. Huh. So, I, and that was the only time that that's happened to me, but that definitely, that definitely happened. Thank gotcha. you, uh, skeptic, for... <laughs> <laughs> giving us the definitions because very bad seeker over here and you know i remember feelings i don't remember facts so <laughs> i appreciate that and well, i do paradol or jeopardy ever becomes a thing i, I think that I've, <laughs> I've got a shot at the at the jeopardy i think you do um but i do think just going back to what we were talking about i think amy it probably was more the claire cognizant Right. Like, I feel like the clear sentience kind of just going back to that is more about like feeling energy. So like, and you might have this too. Like, I know I'm an empath, so I can feel other people's emotional energy. So that's kind of yeah. like the clear sentience, I believe. Yeah. I think the clear cognizance is the, the knowing you just know it. Yeah. 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 Very uh, interesting. Another thing going back to you were talking about a class you're in where there was a picture passed around and, and you were looking for impressions. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting to me about that is uh, I'm not sure if either of you or maybe any relations have heard of Zener cards, but I may even be pronouncing that wrong. I only ever read the word Z E N E R, but there was a, a, a psychologist in the, I think he mostly practiced in the forties and fifties named uh, Carl Zener. And he came up with this test to see if someone uh, is is likely to be on like, the ESP scale. Uh, and there's five. It, 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 this is a mixture of cards. There's five cards. It's a, a a circle, like a like an O, a plus sign, three wavy lines, a square, and a star. And they had different colors on them. And he would record the you know exper you know, uh, what do you call it. Uh, patients or volunteers kind of in like a, a study kind of way and he would look at the card and ask the person what they thought the card was and he recorded i think hundreds of people doing this um and and he felt that there was a pattern of certain people to be able to figure the, to see because he knew and that's how he measured esp and i, I kind of feel like that might be a take on the zener method and um, anybody who remembers the, the old film, the Ghostbusters, uh, they, mm -hmm. they, they, they do that in Ghostbusters in a couple different scenes. Uh, I think I do remember that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to have to go back and watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it is kind of um, a similar process. It's like you're trying to pick up on the energy, you know, what's on this card or, you know, from this photograph, what energy are you picking up? from it you know so it is yeah. just a different way of tuning in it sounds like yeah did I tell you when, when we were young at my grandma's house that we used to actually levitate people no please tell <laughs> more <laughs> and we loved doing it we loved it 
it was so weird. We would have like anyone lay down, like an adult, whatever. And we would have um, four people, um, one at the head, one at the feet, one on each side. And we would each take two fingers on each hand and put underneath the person. And then we would say our, I don't want to call it a chant, but I, I guess it kind of is. We, we would say our, our little diddy do. And at the end, we would say, okay, ready, lift. And we could honestly get those people like two feet off the ground. It was so weird, but it worked every single time. Was the chant light as a feather, stiff as a board? Yes. Well, it kind of. Wait, kind of. No, it was kind of like, um, she is sick. She is dead. She is dying. We will wrap her in white linen. She'll be light as a feather. Tomorrow we will bury her. Then on the count of three, lift. Wow. So it seems like it was derived from that. I definitely have heard of light as a feather, stiff as a board. I have um, too. And remember trying it as, you know, an adolescence and did not have that experience so that's wild that yeah, you could actually sure. lift people that's that's wild we did and i honestly i think because we did it at my grandma's and mm. there were so many people who like i said had connections with the other side that the accumulation of all the energy together probably allowed us to do it yeah like i know if i do the ouija board now with like just my sister Sometimes we can get it going. Sometimes we can't. Mm -hmm. But when we were at my grandma's and we had everyone there with all that energy, it it just flew and it would go on for like an hour. It would just say so much stuff. So I think it, it matters like how much energy you have while you're trying to, you know, do whatever it is you're trying to do. Mm hmm. Yeah, it no. seems like your your family members were definitely very spiritually attuned. So yeah. it was like, yeah, it was easy for them to kind of connect that way. Yes. The the sessions where where you know you had somebody writing, you would have to know if anyone in your family happened to keep those. Do you? Um, I don't know if they did. I, I would have to ask them. But what's really weird? One time, um. My aunt asked the Ouija board, um, you know, where do you live? And the Ouija board actually said, I live in your closet. I watch you get undressed and I love you. I'm like, oh, oh my. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a little weird. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, creepy. That's uh, incredibly <laughs> specific. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Had her husband passed away at that time or? No, she wasn't married at that oh, time. Oh, she wasn't married. Was like a long time ago. Yeah, she 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 was probably like in her twenties at, at that. Oh, point. oh okay. Yeah, oh. yeah. Because I was like, that makes your, it creepier. Yeah, if it's your you know <laughs> husband watching you, okay, that's one that's thing. Right. But just some random ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was a little weird. Yeah, I know. That's why I stay to my house regularly. <laughs> yeah. Good call. <laughs> Good call. <Yeah. laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. This has been a very fun and interesting conversation. I really appreciated hearing your stories. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you were so welcome. I enjoy talking about it. Good. Uh, nice right. to meet you. You too, Jonathan. <laughs> Well, thank you again. It was so good to talk to you and we will talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Yep, take it easy. Thank you so much for being here. If you have a strange story you want to share with us, email us at seekerandskeptic at gmail.com. We look forward to talking to you soon.